Hello and welcome to the course on dealing with materials data. Last few sessions we have been working with the uh, statistical process called hypothesis testing. It is a part of statistical inference in which we try to infer more about the population that we are trying to understand. So far we introduced the concept of hypothesis testing. We gave 6 steps of classical hypothesis process and uh, we followed these steps to derive the uh, hypothesis testing procedures uh, under the assumption that the population is normal. We consider two cases, one is when the variance of the population is known and the other when the variance for population is unknown and both the times we try to test the hypothesis, the null hypothesis that the mean of the sample, mean of the population, I am sorry, mean of the population is equal to a fixed value mu, mu 0. In both the cases we also demonstrated it through an example and we found that uh, when variance is known, it is the standard normal deviate z which is equal to the sample mean minus mu 0 divided by standard deviation over square root n is the test statistic and uh, when sigma square is unknown x bar that is the sample mean minus the mu 0 divided by sample standard deviation over square root n which is distributed as t with n minus 1 degrees of freedom is the test statistic. In this particular session we would like to talk about the type 1 error in testing of hypothesis process and talk about type 2 error as a function of parameter under testing. Uh, so far what we have done is we have set up the procedure, the 6 steps of classical testing. Uh, we define the critical region by equating it to the fixed value type 1 error alpha. But if you look at the uh, classical approach, it says that fix the level alpha at minimum possible level and then the probability of type 1 error should be actually less than or equal to alpha. So far we have equated it with the alpha, it does not make any difference. But we would like to set up a test procedure in which we actually calculate the probability of type 1 error and we test it with the alpha. So you remember we had a critical value in the previous approach and we were uh, comparing the test statistic with the critical value. Here we would like to compare the probability with the alpha value that is with the fixed value for which we have want to have your type 1 error smaller than that fixed value. So let us start, we again take the same two cases, we assume that the population is normal, mean is unknown, sigma square that is the uh, variance of the population is known, this is one case, when it is unknown it is the second case. And, uh, on the sidelines I would like you to tell you that this assumption of normality gives a very beautiful closed form solution. So it is very easy to understand this procedure but we will also consider a case in which it is not a normal distribution and still the same statistic can also be utilized uh, with some more calculations to arrive at the similar testing of hypothesis procedure. So, uh, we start our test statistic is uh, z which is a sample mean minus mu 0 divided by standard deviation over square root n 
it is a parameter uh, without any unknown parameter it is a normal distribution without no uh, with uh, known parameters 0 and 1. Let us call z sub 0 as then actual value of this z when x bar is known. So, if known value of x bar is small x bar is available from the data and mu 0 and sigma are given to you then this is a known quantity it is a number. Therefore, type 1 error actually says that your z 0 should be smaller than the absolute value of z this defines your critical region. Uh, and this critical region will be then we will say that reject h0 if probability that z0 is smaller than absolute uh, random variate z is less than or equal to alpha or equivalently we can say that probability of z0 less than z the uh, random variable is less than or equal to alpha by 2. Shall we repeat this once again why it becomes alpha by 2 because here is where I find many people tend to get confused. So, I am sorry if it is being too much of a repetition, but my experience says that it is worth repeating it. So, we will have uh, z uh, is a standard normal distribution with a mean 0 and uh, here is what we are looking for this area and this area to be the critical region ok. Since this is symmetric if the probability of critical region under H0 is alpha then each of this region has to be alpha by 2 this is first part ok. So, that is why we have come that if you want to take only z greater than that is the random variable z greater than small z 0 this is what we would like to have alpha or smaller. Remember that it will have alpha value if this is z alpha by 1 minus alpha by 2 if you recall the previous session. So, this whole area maybe I should change the color of the pen uh, let us make it uh, green. So, this whole area is alpha by 2 and this is the area we are saying that should be smaller than alpha by 2 ok. So, then we continue. So, if we take the example I am not going to repeat the statement of the example you can take it up from the previous session, but then z0 turns out to be 1.72 and uh, I am sorry this is a mis error I do not want to write this. So, you please remove this ok and uh, so, we have probability of z 0 smaller than z which is probability of 1.72 smaller than z and that probability turns out to be 0 0.04727 which is much greater than 0 0.025 which is alpha by 2 and therefore, we cannot reject the lot. We have not enough evidence to reject the lot we have to accept it this comes out from the previous slide that if you have to accept it this probability has to be greater than alpha by 2 and that is what we find here. If sigma square is unknown it is the same thing except that it becomes a t statistic because the sigma the way uh, standard deviation gets replaced by sample standard deviation then it follows a t distribution and it becomes a t random variable and therefore, if you take a t 0 or a w 0 as it is a known quantity given. So, type 1 error becomes that w 0 because we have already assumed h to be 0 I mean sorry 
null hypothesis to be true. So, we have already put a mu 0 here and therefore, this is uh, the type 1 error probability and that has to be is equal to alpha or uh, this is the type 1 probability where t is distributed as a t distribution with n minus de 1 degrees of freedom. So, we say that reject the null hypothesis if the w0 is less than absolute value of random variable t that probability has to be less than alpha equivalently in the same argument you can say that the probability of w0 less than the random or the let us put it other way around. The random variable t has to be greater than w0. So, probability that random variable t is greater than w0 is 1 minus alpha that is the correct way to put it otherwise you accept the hypothesis. Once again if we go to the super alloy rods example. Now, you know that in the second case we had taken sample variance or sample standard deviation as 112 MPa. So, this value turns out to be 1.69. So, probability that a t, t random variable with n minus 1 degree of freedom is larger than 1.69 is 0 0.047 which is definitely greater than 0 0.025 and therefore, we cannot reject the lot. We do not have sufficient evidence to reject the lot. Let us talk about type 2 error. Type 2 error is accepting the null hypothesis when in reality it is not true. So, probability that type 1 uh, sorry it should be type 2 let us correct it here and we will change the color of the pen to black this has to be type 2 error please correct it it has to be a type 2 error. So, that uh, then we again consider the case of normal population with sigma square known. So, we want to test the hypothesis that uh, null hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught versus alternate that mu is not equal to mu naught. So, beta is probability of acceptance of H0 when population mean is not mu naught it is some other mu. It means that beta is a function of mu because please remember mu is equal to mu 0 completely defines everything. Here when you say that mu is not equal to mu 0 it does not completely define and therefore, it is it becomes the type 2 error becomes a function of mean and uh, mean value which is not equal to mu naught and therefore, it can be expressed at beta of mu as probability when you take mu is equal to mu not mu naught uh, of the test statistic because our critical region is coming through test statistic and you are making it acceptance. So, it is less than or equal to z alpha by 2 which is the va critical value of the uh, test and therefore, this becomes minus z alpha by 2 less than x bar minus mu 0 over sigma over square root n less than or equal to z alpha by 2. This is called an operating characteristic curve which has argument mu and the response beta. If you look at this function uh, beta of mu when h naught is not true z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over square root n is distributed where mu is not equal to mu naught it is distributed as a standard normal variate. So, we can uh, derive it from here this is the probability as derived earlier. We have added or rather we have subtracted from every side the uh, mu divided by sigma square root n and uh, I think there is an error here and let me correct it yes there is an error here there are lots of errors. So, let us start correcting it here. 
we have to subtract it in all the sides. So, this has to be minus ok. So, we have subtracted everywhere mu over sigma square root n this is subtracted from all the sides. So, this has to be minus and then what uh, then what we find is I think this step there is an error this step there is an error let us do it here. So, therefore, what you have to do is uh, z minus mu 0 over sigma square root n ok. this is correct and then what we are doing is yes this z is this no this is correct this z is this and therefore it is z minus mu 0 over sigma square root n and this should be minus and therefore you take mu 0 you add mu 0 over sigma square root n on both the sides so you get this so this is correct this is correct with this correction this is correct with this correction and therefore it is phi remember phi is phi of a is another notation where minus infinity to a 1 over square root 2 pi exponential 1 half x square dx is called phi of a is a function it is a, a cumulative distribution function of standard normal variate. So, this shows the cumulative distribution function of standard normal variate. So, what it says is that it says that the area under this curve can be shown as area in this curve minus the area in this curve. So, that is what it is being shown here it takes the full area here minus this area is this central area is what this equation shows. Uh, So, if you take the super alloy rods area I mean the case and you say that suppose the actual mean uh, yield strength is uh, 1120 uh, 1, MPa and but we accepted the null hypothesis you remember in the previous case we said that the null hypothesis is acceptable it means that you have accepted that mu 0 is 1110 MPa I have forgotten to put the unit here please uh, make sure this is MPa. So, in this case what is the type 1 error we have committed? So, we calculate it out beta of this mean value which is the difference between this z alpha by 2 is 1.96 I am uh, mistaken I think right the mistake has happened here. Uh, it is uh, z uh, 1 minus alpha by 2 and the other is alpha by 2. So, here alpha by 2 what we mean is this area ok. So, in that case it is 1.96 so actually we are taking z 1 minus alpha by 2 please make a uh, correction here that uh, here uh, I am sorry for so many corrections, but it is z 1 minus alpha by 2 ok. Uh, and therefore, uh, we get the type 2 error as 0 0.85 which is actually is very high. One of the reasons could be you will see that this yield strength is not near really normal and we are comparing it with the standard normal variate and therefore it might be giving us this value anyway. 
This was just an example to demonstrate how the type 2 error is to be calculated. So, let us summarize. We carried out the classical hypothesis testing procedure by fixing the uh, type 1 error to alpha. In this case what we did is we actually calculated out the type 1 error and we showed it that if we set up the decision procedure that you reject the null hypothesis if the type 1 error is less than or equal to alpha and you accept the null hypothesis if it is greater than alpha. We introduced also I mean reintroduced the concept of type 2 error as a function of mean of normal population when variance is unknown, variance is known. Uh, please uh, note that uh, this becomes this mean is not the same as mu 0, this is under the alternate hypothesis and the same process you can extend it for, where, for the case when the population variance is unknown instead of dealing with a standard normal deviate z you will be working with a t deviate with a degrees of freedom and minus 1. Thank you.